Hey you all, how are you? So before starting with the video, I just want to tell you guys that so many of you are liking the content that is being posted on this channel Dentistified and you definitely want more such informative videos on a regular basis. Yes, I hear you, but you've not subscribed to the channel. So firstly, make sure that you are subscribed and you can also support the channel by contributing through the thanks icon which is next to the like and share buttons down below. So in my previous video, I gave you a brief overview about the mandibular major connectors and their specific requirements. Link for that video will be provided in the description box below for you. But in today's video, we'll be talking about our first and the most frequently used mandibular major connector that is lingual bar. So if you are interested in learning about lingual bar, then continue watching this video. So lingual bar is the most frequently used mandibular major connector. Okay, and it is mostly indicated for all tooth supported removable partial dentures if there is adequate space between the free gingival margins of the mandibular teeth and the floor of the mouth. So the availability of this space is a major factor in determining whether a lingual bar can be used or not. Now let's talk about the shape of this mandibular major connector. So lingual bar is flat on the tissue side, whereas it is convex or teardrop shaped on the tongue side, as we can clearly see in this diagram. Now this means that the superior border of this mandibular major connector should be tapered towards the gingival tissues. As we can see in the diagram that the superior border of lingual bar is tapering towards the gingival tissues. Okay, Whereas on the other hand, the inferior border of the lingual bar, it should be slightly rounded. This means that the greatest bulk is present at the inferior border. Okay, Now this explains the half pear shape of the lingual bar. Why? Because the bulkiest portion is located inferiorly. Now why the inferior border of lingual bar is rounded? The rounded inferior border will ensure that it does not impinge the lingual tissues as the denture base moves under the functional occlusal loads. Okay, I hope you are clear with this concept. Now let's talk about the location of this mandibular major connector. So there should be a gap of approximately 0.4 millimeters between the denture and the mucosa as we can see in this diagram and the superior border of lingual bar should be at least 3 millimeters or more below the free gingival margin. If the superior border of lingual bar is closer than 3 millimeters to the free gingival margin of the mandibular teeth, then there are increased chances of traumatizing the underlying tissues. Okay, and this in turn is going to increase the likelihood of uh, food lodgement under the mandibular major connector, which could further result in periodontal problems. Therefore, the superior border of lingual bar should be kept as far below the free gingival margin as possible. So the minimum occlusal gingival height of 5 mm is required to ensure adequate rigidity of the lingual bar. This explains that at least 8 mm of vertical space between the free gingival margin of mandibular teeth and floor of the mouth is required in order to accommodate a lingual bar major connector. And the inferior border of lingual bar should be as low as the lingual tissues and the functional depth of floor of mouth will permit. We have already discussed the methods to measure the functional depth of floor of the mouth in previous video. 
Link for that video is provided in the description box below for you. Now let's discuss the indications of lingual bar. As I've already explained earlier that lingual bar major connector should be used when there is sufficient space of at least 8 mm between the free gingival margin and the floor of the mouth. That means first indication of lingual bar is sufficient space should be available of at least 8 mm. Okay, so second indication for lingual bar is that even if crowded or overlapped mandibular anterior teeth are present, we can use lingual bar. Why? Because there is no contact of the lingual bar major connector with the mandibular anterior teeth. So it can be used even in case of crowding. Third is diastema of mandibular anterior teeth. Lingual bar is not going to hamper the aesthetics. Why? Because there is no metal show even if the patient has diastema of lower anterior teeth. Metal of the lingual bar is not going to show through. So it can be used when the diastema of mandibular teeth is present. Now we'll be talking about the contraindications of lingual bar. So whenever mandibular teri is present, which cannot be removed surgically and will interfere with the placement of lingual bar, in such cases, it is better to avoid using lingual bar. Okay. Another contraindication for lingual bar is that when the lingual frenum is high or the vertical space available for a lingual bar is limited, it is less than 8 millimeters. In those cases, we should better avoid using lingual bar. Okay. So, third contraindication for uh, lingual bar is that if severe undercut is present on the lingual alveolar ridge, it is better to avoid lingual bar in such cases. Why? Because there are increased chances of food lodgement under the lingual bar in such cases which can further result in periodontal problems. So next we'll be talking about the advantages of lingual bar. First is lingual bar is simple to design and fabricate. Patients generally prefer lingual bar over lingual plate because it is comparatively small and there is minimal interference with the function and aesthetics. Another advantage of lingual bar is that it has minimum contact with the remaining teeth and tissues. Therefore, there is decreased potential for plaque accumulation. Hence, the potential for caries, periodontal problems and mucositis caused by plaque accumulation is also minimal. Moreover, due to the decreased contact with the remaining teeth, there is negligible decalcification of the teeth. Now we'll be talking about the disadvantages of lingual bar. So there are chances of making the lingual bar thin and flexible if the sufficient space is not present for its placement. This can further compromise the rigidity of this mandibular major connector. That means the rigidity of the lingual bar will be compromised. Okay. Another disadvantage is that we cannot plan future placement of one or more anterior teeth because it is difficult to add additional prosthetic teeth to the lingual bar. So yeah, that is it for today's video. I hope it gave you some clarity on lingual bar. We'll talk about the other mandibular major connectors in our upcoming videos, so stay tuned for that. So yeah, that is it for today. If you found this video helpful, then don't forget to subscribe and also press the ringing bell, which is next to the subscribe button, so that you don't miss out any of my new videos and you'll get notified whenever I post a new one. You can also support this channel by contributing through the thanks icon which is present next to the like and share buttons. Do share it with your friends and colleagues and hit that like button if you want me to make more such videos. You can also drop your suggestions about the topics you want me to cover in future videos in the comment section below. 
सो या स्टे पॉजिटिव स्टे सेफ एंड आई विल सी यू वेरी सून इन माई नेक्स्ट वीडियो